This is Keen. He's a one-year-old Border Collie mix. I just picked him up at his family's home. He's here for a two-week board and train, and this is his evaluation walk. This is Keen's evaluation walk. He is a one-year-old Border Collie mix. His pet parents have had him about six months, and Keen is a rescue. Prior history includes a previous family that just couldn't handle him. Before that, he had the run of 50 acres, absolutely no training, and came home only to eat. Anytime he can boat and run away, he does. Number one request by the family is off-leash recall. Note during his evaluation walk, his nose is to the ground and Keen is not aware that I exist at the other end of the leash. The six-foot leash is fully extended and Keen does not turn when I turn. There is a lot of tension on the leash. He also does not visually check in with me. The walk is unbalanced and it's all about Keen. Note here how he crosses over in front of me and I could have fallen over him. He is directing the walk. I'm going to go ahead and begin training, starting with the follow command. The follow command is a loose leash walking command. It's an informal command for walking. He can walk in front, behind, or to either side of me, just so there's no tension on the leash. I'm also looking to see that he visually checks in with me occasionally. <laughs> Change of pace. The beginning of working on turns. Note how he's aware I exist at the other end of the leash and we're working as a team. Okay, notice when my feet stop moving, he stops. And when my feet are moving, he's walking with me. Tension on the leash, she's visually checking in. Keen's release command. In the next couple of days, I'm going to be working with him with the uh, wait or stay command, which is this particular hand signal. Most dogs uh, know that hand signal. They read your body language first or your nonverbal first before they actually read uh, the verbal piece. So in a way, it doesn't matter whether you use uh, wait or stay. So Border Collies are also extremely smart and have a large vocabulary. So in the next coming days, we'll just see how this goes. Continuing with our uh, follow command, uh, this is the uh, second session. So here we go. Follow.
hurting breeds, they tend to nip at your ankles and that. So I'm uh, aware of that particular trait with this breed. And so I'm going to be working with him during uh, his different walks that that's not happening. Like right now, I can feel he's touching me, but I'm not having the nipping. But that's not something that uh, you want on a walk. So you can sort of see what's going on, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, work with him with that. Okay, so uh, he understands that uh, playing around with the ankles is not something that we want during a walk. We'll continue working over uh, with that over the couple of weeks here. Good boy. Good job. One of the most important things I do is bonding with every dog that comes into my program. It's also the most fun thing. <laughs> so he, he's got a squeaky toy his family set with him, so we're just going to play with that. to teach him his release command and we're going to go ahead and work on that. Break. Good. Yeah. Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Okay, your ball. Okay, so it, it's gone under the board. He's letting me know. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the board. And there it is. Good boy. Ball. Yes. Okay, so I'm only rewarding when he drops it onto the board. Break. Yes. Okay, so I've turned his release command break into a game. So he knows he only gets rewarded when the ball is placed onto the board. Break. Yep. Yes. Break. Yes. Yes. So this is uh, Keen's crate. He's got his bones. Good boy. And he's um, got his water over here. And he has a room by himself. 
and he has music, but I don't have it on right now because of YouTube's copyright regarding music.